We're running a night test today. That was obvious in those opening shots. This is the Remington Golden Sabre 38 Special Plus P 125 grain brass jacketed hollow point. And in those opening shots, I was using the Smith & Wesson model 438. That is approximately two inch on the barrel, little snub nose. And there are the nickel plated brass shells from those three shots. This is a warm little load, I'm telling you. If you're not uh, ready for that and have a good grip on it, you might just lose your grip. 975 feet per second, advertised muzzle velocity. I'm coming in about 10% less. My five shot average out of that model 438 is 886 feet per second. I paid about $40 for a box of 25 rounds, and this has been sitting around for several months. I'm just now getting to testing this. Uh, this is not a bonded bullet. I have seen advertised a bonded bullet for this, but I could not find it on Remington's website. It might be some type of law enforcement load, so someone could confirm that availability. That would be great because I have seen other results online testing this load, the non-bonded version, and in quite a few of these tests, whether or not it's in water, wet pack, or ballistic gel, the latter is what we're going to use in just a moment, there has been some jacket separation. That's not a good thing. So we're going to pop this into the sim test block, distance of 10 feet, and we're going to add four layers of denim. The shot is inside of the 20 inch block, no exit. This is our shot path as I was cutting through the block trying to perceive where the channel was. This is the left side as I was cutting and as you can see I lost it pretty quickly. So we're going to go down here and I lost it on this path as well but this is where we found the bullet. Point of entry there, nice little uh, stretch cavity, permanent stretch cavity starting about two and a half inches. That runs for approximately two and a quarter inches. Widest point it is three quarters of an inch and one of those pedals or something is cutting in there and that's about half an inch deep that's not too bad this carries on and if I can open that up you got a little bit of denim blowing in that's all the way out to the five inch mark still cutting through and right about here is where I lost it I just had to actually take my thumb and start pressing on it until I found the uh, bullet and then I did some more slicing at a different angle that's 11 12 13 and 13, let me get straight up there, it is 13.75, 13 and 3 quarters, that is not bad. And this is the right side of the track, so the bullet at some point, or when it stopped, took a turn back to the left. But from what I can tell, the jacket is still attached. We'll check for any uh, slipping on that in just a moment. I've already dug out this media. There was no denim in the hollow point cavity. That is a plus. Well, you know what? Let's just dig back up. There we go. Dig around. And let's roll it out. Okay. We're going to take that over to post-op, get it cleaned up, and give you some measurements. Here's the high end on the diameter mark, but the average is .618 inches. After rinsing the media, retained weight is 125.5 grains. When you consider the results of this compared to the 38s I've tested so far up to this point, and that's really only a handful as of this date, but even other calibers. The penetration was good, nearly 14 inches, not necessarily over penetrating. We had very good uniform expansion. The bullets seemed to hold together, didn't see any evidence of jacket separation. We didn't see evidence of any material or denim clogging that hollow point cavity. So we don't have bone, we don't have body density, mass, angle of the shot, uh, all those types of things, movement, didn't have that as we don't in these other tests, but by comparison, this seemed to do well. Thanks for watching.